going to be a day that features, we think, maybe some good basketball and potential upsets for teams that can make a deep run into the Sweet 16, like Colorado and Grand Canyon. Joe Dallin, some picks on tomorrow's action? Thank you, Tyler. Picking today's games, that's so yesterday. <laughs> Picking tomorrow's games, <laughs> that's so today. And that's what we call clever wordplay. Get on the train, ladies and gentlemen. Top three plays from each of us for Sunday slate in no particular order. Where would you like to begin? Nothing better when you call yourself clever. Uh, we're going to start here with the number one team in the tournament. Oh, and I'm going to take the points of Northwestern. Here's the deal. I just think this number's too high. Like, this is this team is Northwestern has be, you know, beat Dayton. They beat Illinois, beat Michigan State, beat Purdue. We saw what they did yesterday. They don't turn the ball over. They make shots. They're veterans. They've been here before. This is their second straight year in the tourney. 14 and a half in a game that, yes, I don't think they're going to beat UConn, but this, I think they're capable of hanging in the entire game. That's a lot of points, bro. That, my friend, is extremely reckless. And as your friend, I have no choice <laughs> but to get right behind it. I agree. Let's go ahead and work this through from a point spread standpoint, okay? 14 and a half to Northwestern. If you go back to the start of the Big East tournament, UConn was laying 15 to Xavier. Xavier. Xavier finished the season 16 and 18 outside the top 50 in both offensive and defensive efficiency, right? This Northwestern team, 22 and 11. Slow tempo, can get hot from three as we saw in the second half of that game against Florida Atlantic. I'm with you on that. Too many points is what this comes down to. Number two. Uh, this is my, I talked about this earlier today. I'm gobbling up points everywhere we go ah. here. But this, I think, Grand Canyon, the Canyon, I think they can win out right. Playing in Spokane, that felt like a home game last night. I mean, that, that crowd was up and in that game the entire time. Everybody now saw the athleticism. You saw Ty on Grant, Grant Foster, the ability to protect the rim. Obviously, you got to run Alabama off the three-point line and still be able to guard your yard to keep them in front because that's how they break down and get, get their threes. I think they can do this. I think they win the game. I got in my bracket. Yeah, that was huge. Last night, we're going to keep them rolling for the win. Guard your yard. Guard your yard, man. Words my father lived by in his <laughs> yearly war with my neighbor to the right. Okay. Uh, boom. Right here. Clemson plus four and a half over Baylor. Do not be fooled by what you saw from Baylor against Colgate. Fantastic performance. It's Colgate. They shot the lights out in that game. 58% from the field, 53% from deep. Don't expect that to happen again. This is a team, last 17 games, going into the Colgate matchup, they were 9-8. and eight. They can get hot, but they can also get ice cold. Clemson just blew out a red-hot New Mexico team that everybody was in love with. Yep. They had an average shooting night. Average shooting night. And on top of that, top 10 free throw shooting team. If you don't think it matters this time of year, people, just talk to Auburn Jeez. and the final minute of how that game played out against Yale. Final selection for Sunday. Those guys have been thinking about 2-7 and seven from the field to the <laughs> free throw line for the rest of their lives. Uh, we're yes. with James Madison, baby. I, this is another I had in my bracket. We saw the physicality last night. You saw how they can guard you and get into you and be physical with a Wisconsin team. I think they do the same thing with Duke. They've been saying this the whole time. Duke is not good in these physical matchups. They don't necessarily succeed in that. They want to make it comfortable and flow. James Madison takes that away. I think they win outright. I'm probably going to play them both money line and a points. Dangerous there for me, considering how far I might have Duke going in the bracket. More on that never. <laughs> Colorado's favorite son. Ah, uh, there you go. go Mr. Boulder here, everybody. Mr. Mile High right here. Uh, jokes aside, number's too big. Marquette should be a one-point favorite, in my opinion. Not three and a half. Marquette does not defend the three-point line well. Colorado can bomb from deep. Marquette does not shoot free throws well. They are below the national average. Colorado can. When we're talking about a tight point spread, like three and a half, you got to make those free throws late in the game. And if Marquette can't, that's going to keep us hanging around if we don't already have the lead in that matchup. Colorado's won 10 of 11. They've covered six of the last seven. We've tried to put you all on the train. There's only so much we can do. We can give you the ticket you need to board on your own. Tyler, we're out of breath. We're sweating over here. Conductor.